Hawken was a really special game. It was a first-person mech shooter that broke a lot of the rules of the genre by incorporating arena shooter mechanics. Whereas games like Mech Warrior are primarily based on managing heat and subsystems and prolonged large-scale fights, Hawken was all about speed. Time to kill was substantially lower, movement options like jump jets and dashes were much more common, and both maps and mechs were smaller to promote faster paced skirmishing. While this style of gameplay would normally be counterproductive to the theme, Hawkins' audio and visual design completely sold the idea of being in a lumbering metal construct even when you're moving at high speeds. Each step your mech takes is accompanied by the heavy sound of your mech's foot hitting the ground, and everything from the cockpit design to the jump jets firing off behind you when you dash is designed to make sure you never forget you're piloting a massive machine. The game modes also feed into the low-tech industrial aesthetic, with objectives including missile launchers that fire at the opponent's base, or energy collection points that allow you to launch massive battleships that fly over the map. The first couple of years were full of optimism and excitement from everyone involved with Hawken. The tech demos received a ton of attention both on YouTube and from investors, and initial playtests were promising, with players instantly falling in love with the scrappy arena-style combat. The game seemed poised to make waves and sailed into a full release practically swimming in investor money. But as they say in one of my other favorite games, but overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. And as time went on, it became apparent that the investor money had been too much of a good thing. Hawkins' publisher made it evident from the beginning that they were chasing the success of Riot Games, hoping not just to take over the mech genre, but take over PC gaming in general. On the advice of the publisher's CEO, Hawken employed a risky free-to-play model and began branching out into other forms of media, in an attempt to convert their indie title into a full-blown franchise almost comically quickly. Over the next several years, Hawken began publishing a variety of non-game-related media, including a comic series that was available both digitally and physically, a tabletop game, a live-action trailer for what was intended to be a full-blown web series, and perhaps most notoriously, Hawken's publishers sold the right to a movie and even picked out a director. However, within that same span of time, the actual game had begun to stall out. The pressure to recoup some profit for the investors was immense, and the free-to-play model had become controversial with the players, locking important features like mech unlocks, functional customization, and cosmetics behind increasingly unreasonable paywalls. New game modes were nowhere to be seen except for a co-op game mode that didn't seem to appeal to the PvP-focused player base, which is a theme we'll see again before the end of this video. The matchmaking was borderline non-functional, map releases were basically unheard of, and in general, content updates were minimal. As repeated changes to the game's balance and direction took effect, the game began bleeding players. Within just a few short years of the full release of Hawken, the company in charge of the game went out of business, presumably succumbing to the crushing weight of investor expectations. However, Hawken itself lived on sold to another developer who would keep the game running. Though morale was generally low in the community, there was still some hope that Hawken could be fixed and survive as the niche mech game it was probably always meant to be now that its mainstream aspirations had been crushed. But in the following years, Hawken continued its slow decline, with no meaningful updates or improvements for the PC audience. Instead, development time was primarily spent porting the game to consoles, where an entirely new audience could look at Hawken with fresh eyes. Once that new audience began to play the game, the plug was pulled entirely on PC Hawken and the original audience was abandoned once and for all. As a side point, amusingly, the console player base also fizzled once they began to notice the very same issues that the PC players had been complaining about for some time. Despite the abandonment though, the original player base of Hawken has still looked back fondly on the game in the years after the game's death. The original Hawken trailers still receive nostalgic comments wishing the game could have reached its full potential, 
and it's not rare to see posts asking for game recommendations to scratch the itch for Hawkins' unique brand of fast-paced mech combat. The game has almost become an infamous warning sign for game developers, a flash in the pan that could have been something greater if it hadn't been so horridly mismanaged. So, it wasn't a surprise when rumors began to circulate about a Hawken reboot. Eventually, Hawken Reborn was officially announced, and I still remember the excitement I felt when I saw Hawken back after all these years. I immediately called up my friend who I used to play with, and though I don't remember the full conversation, I do know I said the phrase, we're so back, at least ten times, as well as the phrase, I'll never have to play League of Legends ever again, at least twice. But Hawken Reborn isn't a proper reboot. At least not in the sense that Hawken fans wanted it to be. Hawken's developer heard the clamoring for a return to fast-paced PvP mech skirmishing, and decided to release a purely PvE game where you defeat waves of enemies in an endless grindfest. Now, even if Hawken fans had wanted this, it still would have been a disaster. It's a co-op PvE game that didn't actually add multiplayer co-op functionality until a few weeks ago, despite being out for almost a year. It's a buggy mess that arguably is less polished than the original tech demo footage that made the original game go viral, and it uses AI art in an attempt to hide an obvious lack of development resources. The first feature to get properly implemented was a microtransaction shop. But really, none of that matters, because when you click on any dev communication, any video, any trailer, patch notes, social media posts, you only see one thing. We want Hawken. When are you adding PvP? Please, re-release the original game. We don't want this. We just want Hawken. But ultimately, that is the story of Hawken. A game so great that players have hung on to it for over a decade, despite constant mismanagement. A company that squandered an opportunity due to greed, and a second company that shut the game down only to defile its corpse years later. Though Hawken Reborn is still online, it's only alive in the most technical sense. The devs went radio silent for a couple months, only to come back and confirm that most of the already small development team had been fired. The most recent update did finally add proper multiplayer co-op, but the game only spiked up to a couple dozen players, and as I put the finishing touches on this script, it currently sits at exactly one player. Even if Hawken Reborn does a complete 180 and pivots to PvP tomorrow, it's clear that not only are the resources that made Hawken great no longer available to the developers, but the talent itself is long gone too. The last of the good developers likely never touching the game again after the game got sold all those years ago. So Hawken dies again, not with a bang, but with a whimper. And this time likely for good, since I doubt the game was popular enough to warrant multiple attempts at a reboot. I'm left with all sorts of questions about what the developers didn't understand about what made the game so successful in the first place, but there is one thing I know for certain, and that's that I likely won't play a game quite like Hawken ever again. <laughs>